G'day guys, Rukshani here. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the news vlog. A very quick episode. First up, I wanted to touch on the ICAG ruling from yesterday between Israel and South Africa. South Africa had taken Israel to the International Criminal Court of Justice and a, and a finding has been made, a provisional finding um, in this case. So South Africa had accused Israel of committing war crimes, genocide, and asked the court to intervene against the military operation taking place, effectively asking for a ceasefire. Now, the provisional findings of the court do not actually call for a ceasefire uh, in, in that sense. It does not call for Israel to cease its military actions or stop defending itself. So on that point, I think this is uh, goes towards Israel. The court did determine, however, that based on what South Africa has submitted, that there is a plausible case, for instance, to look at when we're talking about the crimes that Israel has been accused of. However, that in itself is not a finding against Israel. And right now we're having this propaganda war on both sides. So people are saying that you know, the courts decided that Israel is committing genocide. That's not what's happened here. Those determinations are going to take a long time to make based on the evidence that's presented. And of course, Israel is putting forward their case in that. The court has merely said that it will look at those cases, practically saying it will entertain a trial based on what South Africa is presenting. But at the moment, besides asking for humanitarian relief and uh, you know making sure that Israel ensures that the civilian population is not subjected to acts of genocide in its military operations uh, you know Israel is free uh, in in many respects on in this uh, understanding of this um, finding to carry on its self-defense and carry on its military operations so many many are saying that this is more so a victory for israel um especially based on the fact that south africa was predicating this really around the fact that there was very strong evidence that a court would see to call for an immediate ceasefire and stop military operations but that is not what's happened so this article here from abc news top u.n court stops short of ordering israel to cease gaza attacks warns it must prevent genocide in short the court agreed with several aspects of south africa's case but did not grant its key request for an immediate ceasefire What's next? ICJ ruling are considered binding, but, it's, but it has no power to enforce them. Israel PM says the country will continue to defend itself. The United Nations top court has stopped short of ordering Israel to cease its attacks on Gaza as it considers allegations of genocide made by South Africa. At a hearing in The Hague on Friday, the International Court of Justice issued provisional measures in the case brought by South Africa last month. ICJ President Joanne Donahue delivered the interim judgment saying that the humanitarian situation in Gaza is catastrophic. She imposed several conditions on Israel and said it must take all measures to prevent genocide against Palestinians in Gaza, but did not order it to stop its military operation altogether. So that's just in short. Again, I'm, what I'm saying is people are using this for propaganda on both sides, but the court itself has not made any strict determinations besides saying that Israel can continue on defending itself. Now, another development in relation to this that I saw Australia involved in as well is that it's come to light that there's been allegations made against the UN, in particular the arm of the UNRWA, and saying that staff from the UN, essentially, were involved in the October 7th attacks. Now, many international bodies, including the Australian government, has made um, paused funding to UNRWA. Um, just today, Penny Wong issued a statement. So I'm just going to read this statement here just to show you uh, what's happening on that front as well. Australia is deeply concerned by allegations that UNRWA staff may have been involved in the abhorrent October 7 terror attacks. We welcome UNRWA's immediate response, including terminating contracts and launching an investigation, as well as its recent announcement of a full investigation into allegations against the organisation. Australia engage, will engage closely with UNRWA and, in, and investigations and is consulting with international partners. While we do this, we will temporarily pause this disimber, dis, disimbursement of recently announced funding. So Australia was committing, I think, $15 million or even, maybe even more. And many other nations were committing more funding to this UN organization that was heavily involved in uh, Palestine, in Gaza, but they are pausing the funding. And I believe Canada has also made a similar announcement, uh, possibly even the UK. You can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but this is all developing in the last uh, hour or so, this story. So... Uh, these allegations with evidence have been put forward to the UN. The UN have seen them and temporarily uh, taken actions against this. And now you've seen the international community reacting to this. So many fronts on this uh, issue with Israel and Gaza, Palestine, Hamas continue to evolve. Uh, and this is my latest update for you guys on that end. 
the next story I have is guys, Brett Sutton, that's right, our former chief health officer, no longer chief health officer since he's resigned um, and retired from the position. But during the pandemic, of course, he was Daniel Andrews' sidekick, stood side by side with him at press conferences. And he was involved intimately in many of the decisions that were made in our state pertaining to the disastrous, I believe, administration during the COVID-19 era pandemic. Now, Brett Sutton has been awarded an Order of Australia for his service to Victoria. For a man who spoke in exc excruciating detail about COVID-19 in televised press conferences for more than a year, Professor Brett Sutton has a few words to share about his latest achievement. Victoria's former chief health officer, who be became a loved and loathed face of the pandemic in the state, has been appointed an officer of the Order of Australia for distinguished services to the people of Victoria through public health administration, governance and medicine. He said, I feel profoundly grateful to receive this honour and when he was awarded this, uh, awarded Victorian of the Year last year. So he's received multiple awards, actually. This is going back to another award. To me, this is recognition of an ex extraordinary work of thousands of public health in Victoria and the amazing value of their work, their passion and their deep commitment to the health of Victorians, indeed Australians, especially those most in need. Okay, so Brett Sutton has been awarded this Order of Australia. Do you think he deserves it? I'm asking the Victorians out there. Many Victorians are furious about this, saying that this guy deserves no recognition for his role during that time, it's particularly to his services to Victoria. And I tend to agree. I think Brett Sutton has a lot to answer for. He's never been held accountable. He's always managed to skirt free um, in terms of the questioning that's been put to him and hide behind the science as it were, and of course, hide behind the government in many instances. So no one's really taken any responsibility. And here he is today, Brett Sutton, receiving all manner of awards for his services to Victoria. Let me know what you guys think. Now, the last story I have, guys, is around the President Donald J. Trump. That's right. He has been ordered to pay $83.3 million USD, so about $120 mil US, uh, Australian dollars, I believe, to uh, Jean E. Carroll during a defamation trial. Now, this lady, Jean E. Carroll, has accused Donald Trump of raping her. Uh, and it's a very curious case because it's on a criminal trial. Uh, this There was a case last year where it was a civil uh, trial and she was awarded a few million dollars there. And regardless of the fact that there's no burden of, you know, same kind of burden of proof that you have in a criminal trial, it's a much lower in these civil cases. The jury in, I believe, in New York or one of these Democrat states found in her favor during that time. And there's been ongoing uh, issues during, about that case, particularly as it pertains to Donald J. Trump. Uh, saying that he's innocent around this, right? Saying that he's not guilty and saying that she's a liar. So there's continuing continuing defamation cases. And this time, with his, this lady has been awarded $83.3 million. But one thing I want to note is a, a post that's going around on Twitter. I wanted to read that to you because it actually lays out the foundational premises of her case. And I know we're in an era of believe all women, and I totally get that. But there's lots of flaws in her case. And I, and I believe that's why... It might, would have never met the, the criminal threshold for proving something, but in the civil public court of opinion where, you know, these, these people just have Trump derangement syndrome, orange man bad, uh, they will find him guilty of almost anything. Almost anyone can accuse him of anything, right? So this is from a user called Rahim who shared this, Rahim Kassam. It cannot be stressed enough. This is from Jean E. Carroll. She alleged a rape in a public place 30 years ago, but provided no evidence. Her story was remarkably similar to a plot line of a show she binge watched. I believe it's Law and Order. The dress she claimed to be wearing hadn't even been designed at that point. She sex, she's sex obsessed and continues to talk about how sexy rape is. There's videos of this on CNN interviews where she's talking about how rape is sexy. Her case was thought up by George Conway at Molly Jong's Fast House Party. Her case was funded by Democrat Jeff Epstein buddy Reid Hoffman, who was also back, also back Nikki Haley. Her reputation expert admitted to having no experience in reputation repair during cross-examination. She was also found to be a Democrat donor. And honestly, that's just scratching the surface of this debacle. There is so many other more inconsistencies in the testimony that she's given in the circumstances around this. And the fact that uh, this has all now led to a, 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 a payout of almost 120 million Australian dollars for this lady uh, seems quite ridiculous based on the fact that I, don't, I haven't seen any concrete evidence besides these allegations. So it just shows you how broken the American judicial system is and how weighted it is right now against Donald J. Trump, who is the face, who's facing multiple uh, cases like this against him, right? So I believe they will appeal this. I don't think he will uh, settle at this point. That's not the, 
the comment that's been given by the lawyers. I believe they're going to appeal this. Let me know what you think. Do you believe this lady? Do you think Donald J. Trump has raped almost, you know, countless women that keep coming forward? Again, if he becomes a nominee for the Republican Party for this coming election, there will be more women that come out of the woodwork and say that he raped her. And now they've got this uh, almost guaranteed way of making money if they've had any type of connection with Donald J. Trump to take it to a civil court in a state that's you know, hates Donald Trump and is friendly towards Democrats mostly uh, to take it up there and, you know, really put the pressure on Donald J. Trump to pay up <laughs> on, on these, you know, largely ridiculous, ridiculous cases. Anyway, guys, this is my very quick update for you guys today. Sorry about the short news vlog. I am in between doing uh, an event today, so I had to give you a really quick update. Let me know any other stories that I might have missed or anything you want me to cover in the upcoming episodes. Otherwise, you can follow along at The Real Rukshan on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Rumble. Or on YouTube here, you can hit the subscribe button or the notification bell, and you'll get my updates. Thanks, guys. See you next time.